give, please give a warm Ibotta welcome to Ryan Harris, who's going to address us. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. Thank you for your time. I, uh, I am Ryan Harris. I do have shoes, so I don't know what the podcast is, but uh, I'm willing to be on it. As he mentioned, I'm Ryan Harris, champion of Super Bowl 50, 10-year veteran of the NFL, and I believe it's every person's right to be extraordinary. And when we embrace this right through self-education, dedication to the community, and acting on our passions, we can change the world. <clears throat> change the world. Excuse me. <clears throat> change your voice as well. <laughs> so if I, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that have helped me become not only a world champion, but overcome obstacles, right? We all face obstacles, no matter who we are, no matter what we do, no matter where we come from. So I'd like to share some of the things that not only myself, but also my Super Bowl 50 champion teammates have done to be successful. So the first thing I want to talk to you about, if you take nothing else from what we speak of today, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, okay? Not enough people tell you to go ahead and believe in yourself. Take a page from your owner's book, right? Ask him when he had to believe in himself after leaving a law career. Do you think he had to believe in himself to get you guys all here at lunch today? Believe in yourself. Now, one of the ways I believed in myself, I faced many different obstacles throughout my career, both collegially and professionally, are the statements, I am, I can, I will. Say it with me. I am, I, am. I, can. I can, I will. I, will. I am Ryan Harris. I can overcome three back surgeries. I will. I am Brian Leach. I can leave my law firm to start a company. I will. Now, one of my favorite quotes by one of my favorite athletes, Muhammad Ali. Anybody else know what he's kind of known as as well? Muhammad Ali? Social change, another name for him, the greatest. Anybody ever heard him called the greatest? My favorite quote in all of sports is by Muhammad Ali when he says, I called myself the greatest before I knew I was. I called myself the greatest before I knew I was. Believing in yourself doesn't necessarily have to mean believing in that statement at the time. <clears throat> Think about that. You don't have to believe in what you're saying to believe in yourself. People don't say that. People don't tell you that. The night before Super Bowl 50, my teammates and I were laughing, sitting at the table saying, we're world champions. We're world champions. We're world champions. We're going to be world champs. We are world champions. We couldn't help but to smile because we knew the next day we had to face the Carolina Panthers and put a whooping on them. But do you think that believing in ourselves the night before helped us win that game? You better believe it. Do you think Brian believing in himself helped bring you all here? You better believe it. Do you, do you think believing in myself helped me overcome back surgeries, a toe surgery where I had to crawl up the stairs because I couldn't walk? Absolutely. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. I am. I can. I will. Okay. Another big part of believing in yourself is writing down your goals. Do you know that nine, if you write down your goals, you are 90% more likely to achieve them? If you write down your goals, you are 90% more likely to achieve them. Write down your goals. Look at that. <laughs> Have you accomplished any of them or close to them? We're working on it. Working on it. If I can, I will. Yeah. You are Ibotta. You can accomplish those goals, and you will. 90% more likely. Another big piece for me, another game changer for me, right, was meditation. Anybody meditating here? Awesome. Wow, look at that. Your CEO meditates. Hmm. Hmm. Steve Jobs meditated. Oprah Winfrey meditates. LeBron James meditates. Okay? Lots of successful people meditate. So I encourage you to find a meditation practice, five minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you have the ability to do. Seek this out. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. It'll help you identify your priorities, take out what's not important in your life, and achieve your goals. So take that time, 
to meditate. Believe in yourself. I am, I can, I will. Find a meditation practice. Find a meditation practice and write down your goals. Second concept I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is picking up a shovel. Pick up a shovel. There are 270 diamonds in this Super Bowl championship ring. How many of them do you think were laying on the ground? How many of them had to be dug for, polished, washed, rinsed, changed? Pick up a shovel. I could spend the rest of the day talking to you about Super Bowl caliber players in the NFL who were unwilling to work. Brian could tell you a number of stories of employees who had the greatest potential who were unwilling to work. Do yourself a favor, pick up a shovel. Dig. Dig for your diamonds. Part of picking up a shovel is learning how to recognize distractions. Learn how to recognize distractions. Who are distractions? What are distractions? When are certain things a distraction? Hey, I'm getting ready to go to Vegas, okay? I want that distraction in my life, okay? What are distractions? And ask yourself, more importantly, if you don't do the other ones, why are certain things distractions? Why is this a distraction for me? Ask yourself that, because that's where you'll build. That's where you'll create. That's where you will grow as an individual, as an employee, as a friend, as a lover. Why is this a distraction? Learn how to identify those. Especially after you've written down your goals and you recognize distractions, you'll start to say, hey, wait a second. This doesn't help me get 1.5 million monthly FARs. I don't even know what FARs are. <laughs> but once you recognize distractions, you may be in a meeting with somebody. You may be getting that eighth cup of coffee in the morning. That's a distraction. You don't need it. Learn how to recognize distractions. With picking up a shovel and learning how to recognize distractions, also understand that you have to find what works for you. It looks different, right? Peyton Manning is one of the greatest preparers I have ever played with. And I can tell you for a fact, his preparation looks different than anybody else in that locker room. For me, I used to hate sitting in meetings, hate meetings. I would daydream. I would miss important information, not only to my own success, but to the team's success. So I had to figure out that I had to take notes. And I went from making four mistakes a game to four mistakes a year. It looks different for me. It looks different for me the way I prepare. Embrace that. Enjoy that. Because that's what makes you you. That's the handle to your shovel. It looks different for everybody else. Now I want to show you something, tell you, share with you something that I think uh, for sure helped me win the Super Bowl. It's called Stand Up and Shake It Out. So stand up right now, shake it out a little bit, shoulders, hips. Some of y'all got that lunch already sitting in there. There you go. Have a seat. Have a seat. Believe in yourself. Pick up a shovel. I want to talk to you about the third aspect that I'd like to share with you today. Learn how to invest your time. Learn how to invest your money. Anybody ever heard that song, uh, We Are the Champions? Yeah, me too. It's one of my favorite songs now. I played it on the way in. I got the remix by Tiesto. It's off the chain. But I must have heard that song a thousand times in my life. But after winning the Super Bowl, one line stood out more than any other. One line I had never heard. No time for losers. No time for losers. We are the champions of the world. Not everyone is worth your time. Not everyone is worth your time. That may be an employee. That may be a friend outside of work. That may be an in-law. Some of you married people. Not everyone is worth your time. Learn how to invest your time. 
to achieve your goals, right? And your time is your greatest asset. Maximize your time. For some people, learning how to invest your time may mean waking up a little earlier, staying a little later. Learn how to invest your time. We talked about what works for you. Learn what that means for you. One of the greatest ways, if you're, if you're looking for a way to invest your time, service. If you can invest your time serving other people with it, when it brings you no direct benefit, you are investing your time. You got a Saturday morning off, a Sunday morning off. Go to the Denver Rescue Mission. Call your nephew. Help your brother or sister who have kids. Trust me, they need your help. Service is a great way to invest your time. And behind investing your time, learn how to invest your money. Is there anyone under 25 here? Did you know that if you invest $100 before 25, that it's $30,000 when you're 65? Right? $100 invested before 25 is 30000 when you're 65. Learn how to invest your money. Learn how to invest your money. Learn terms like equity, leverage, compound interest, one of my favorite couplings of words. <laughs> and if you're over 25, there's a simple thing I say. Own what you buy. Own what you buy. Anybody got an iPhone? Raise your hand. All right. Raise your hand if you have iPhone, Apple stock. Good. Some of y'all missing out. Anybody go to Starbucks? Anybody got Starbucks stock? Good for you. You start to see where I'm going with this. If you, if you buy something, make sure you own it. Talk to Brian, get some, get some stock options. I'm sure he's got some. You're welcome, by the way. There you go, yeah, yeah. Well, he's pointing at the goals again. <laughs> Own what you buy. Own what you buy. Empower yourself. You've learned how to invest your time. Now invest your money. Empower yourself. Create a change, a difference, a separation from you and others by owning what you buy. Okay? Lastly, my favorite, celebrate every win. Celebrate every win. There's no problem winning. I was just talking to Brooke earlier. Y'all are smashing it. Congratulations. There's no problem winning. There's no problem winning, right? Celebrate every win. And some wins are going to be small, right? I had a tuna salad yesterday. That was a win. <laughs> OK? Now let me give you an example. I'll tell you three things I did this morning, and you tell me if there's a difference. Woke up. Got my kids breakfast, came here to speak to y'all. That's one person. Man, I woke up. Woo! Some people didn't get to wake up today. Man, I got to spend some awesome time with my kids, man. Got them fed, got my son to school, and then, man, I got fresh to death and I came to speak to y'all. Is there a difference? Celebrate every win. There aren't enough of them. Sometimes wins are tough to see. Super Bowl 50 championship year, we had five losses. But when even in a loss, you can find wins. Give gratitude. What are you thankful for? Right? What in this loss, what in this win are you thankful for? What despite this loss are you thankful for? Some of you came from other jobs. I bet you're thankful you left that place. Right? Celebrate every win. And part of celebrating every win also comes from forgiving yourself. Forgive yourself. Brian, have you made a mistake ever? <laughs> you don't say. I'm going to search that shoe podcast, though. Right? I, I've made mistakes, right? Forgive yourself. Do yourself a favor. Forgive yourself the mistakes you make. Don't do them again, but forgive yourself. And the last part about celebrating every win, I mean, I, will, I really want to know, do you know what you sound like when you're celebrating a win? Do you? Do you know what it sounds like in your life for you when you've believed in yourself, 
picked up a shovel, invested your time and your money. Do you know what it sounds like? For me, I got a few things. Woo! Oh, yeah! Rock and roll, man! Sounds different, doesn't it? There will be times I was at practice I did not want to practice. Y'all think Von Miller's awesome. He's a great dude. Try practicing against him every day, okay? <laughs> some days off. PTO. Coach Kubiak didn't believe in PTO. But so I come to practice. Woo! All right! Man, we at practice. And even some of y'all smiling right now. You know, I just told you I didn't want to practice. But now where are we mentally, right? We've gone above. We've gone further. We will achieve. Find out what you sound like when you celebrate. We had, we had bus three, Super Bowl 50 year. The only rule on bus three was there was no rookies on bus three. Rookies ask too many questions. Y'all know new employees. Just trying to get your coffee, and they want to have every single conversation under the sun, right? I'll tell you one thing. Peyton Manning is one of the ter most terrible singers you've ever heard. But it doesn't matter, because when we win, he sings, right? Can't tell you what some of the other guys do when they celebrate, but I can tell you there's a lot of music, a lot of dancing. What's your music? What's your dance? Huh? Figure this out. Celebrate every win. There aren't enough of them. Believe in yourself. Pick up a shovel. Learn how to invest your time and your money and celebrate every win. Stay creative. Stay active. I think we're taking some questions, right? Thank you. So that was awesome. Uh, I think Brian belongs at a startup, doesn't he? <laughs> because you sound like a startup employee. You know, we, we really get passionate about what we do, and we, we try to celebrate every win, but it's, it's such an important reminder. OK, we have time for some questions. I thought that was an amazing uh, oratory for, uh, especially for someone who's not a professional public speaker, hasn't been. But that was incredible. So thank you for that. Thank you. You've got, uh, obviously, you're doing your radio show, and so <laughs> it shows. What questions do folks have for Ryan? We'll pass around, okay. I've heard a lot of good things about meditation too. Um, I'm curious because my problem that even though I haven't tried, so that's step one, is trying to turn off my mind and, and all the things that I have yet to do and mm -hmm. all the to-do list for the weekend. What's your recommendation to, I guess, start meditating and, and really trying to let go of the distractions and just focus on that? I'll show you real quick. Mind if I take this farther? Sit right here in the chair at your house. Hum. Sit there like that. Five, ten minutes. Meditation isn't about turning off your mind. Meditation is about clearing your mind. So if you close your eyes for five minutes and you say, okay, I got a meeting at three. I got to get home by 5.30. I'm trying to get the yoga class at 6.30. You start saying, okay, that's the first minute and a half, two minutes of what you're meditating. Let's say you're meditating ten minutes. What are you going to do the rest of the eight minutes? So it's not about turning off your mind. And that, you know, and that's, a, that's an issue for some people. People have said that to me before. I don't, I don't want to clear my mind for 10 minutes. I'm too busy. I got too much things to do. It's not about that. It's about identifying what's on your mind. Because you may come to find out that something from this speech that you didn't think you heard really affected you. And it's something that you want to implement in your life. You may feel that something in a meeting that you had glossed over is really important to the success of getting those 1.5 monthly FARs. You know what I'm saying? So take the time to listen to your mind. Don't close it off. Don't shut it off. And when, if you're obsessing about a thought, hear that sound that you started your meditation with. And it'll break and just move on. It's, picture your thoughts on a carousel under a river coming through. They're moving. And you've got time to think. Something that with smartphones, everything else that we have going, we don't emphasize enough. What's one of the most interesting or surprising things about winning the Super Bowl that the general public probably doesn't know? Man, that White House visit. <laughs> you know, especially as a brother, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wasn't supposed to be in there until like 1980 or something. Seeing George Washington's sword and all that, you know, and, and being in the White House. And, and also, man, the, anybody, was anybody at the parade for the Super Bowl 50? I mean, that was rocking. That was awesome. We, uh, we took off uh, work that day. So. 
What a phenomenal boss you have. <laughs> celebrating every win. I like that, Brian. Yeah, celebrate your win. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, I'd say the, the parade was amazing. And just to see everybody in Denver, you know, all the fans, everybody was happy. The, 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 the parents with kids who you knew had been at a parade when John Elway and the Broncos won it before with their parents, you know. Uh, I, I'm from Minnesota, so when the Minnesota Twins won, I was able to go to the parade. So to be a part of that and to see it was great. But, yeah, and also just being black in the White House was phenomenal. What's that like? Tell us more about the White House. Oh, man. Obama's exactly how you thought he is. He's cool, man. He goes, hey, everybody, how are you doing? <laughs> Peyton, who's going to retire first, you know? So he was cool, man. There's heavy security, though. I mean, you'd be standing here in, in just, like, the biggest, most, you know, weaponed out person you've ever seen in your life is walking behind you. He's like, good afternoon. You're like, hey, man, don't talk to me. I don't want to die. I pass security. But, you know, so just being there, seeing the lawn, being able to look into the, to the Oval Office, um, man, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. So those two, those two aspects of winning the Super Bowl were awesome. Hi. Um, I know that being, like, in the offensive line is very important for everyone to play in safe. Um, if there's ever a situation, which I'm sure there is, where someone is completely out of sync and they actually need some help. What is your strategy for motivating your team? Absolutely. That making them think to win. Engagement, right? Especially as leaders, oftentimes we've been through so, so many situations that we just assume other people have the knowledge that we have. So I made a big, big deal about engaging with our younger players. Listen, we had one player specifically who was having some struggles at the time, and we came into the playoffs. And, and one of the things I've been working with, anybody know performance psychology? Anybody ever heard of that? That's a very, very big field in professional sports, right? Learning how to eliminate distractions, focus on what matters. So instead of just letting him flounder and ultimately us losing the Super Bowl because of it, I chose to engage him, right? I said, hey, man, I know you're going through some struggles. Come talk to me, come with me and my guy, and we're going to set it up. Just sit with us for 10 minutes, right? One minute in the meeting, I just left. I walked out the door, sat on the outside. Now, this player then became one of the stalwarts that helped us win the Super Bowl. So if you ever have somebody who's not picking it up, who's not carrying their weight, engage with them, right? We don't know what people are going through. It may come to find out that they've had a foster child, you know, for the last two years and they aren't able to adopt them. They may, you may find out that there's a death in the family. Oftentimes, performers don't want to give a reason for a lack of production. That's on you as a leader, as a team member, to engage with them and to find out where they're at and what possibly motivates them. So in the two-part question here, the second part's kind of loaded, so I'll prepare you for that. <laughs> the first part is related to the previous question. How do you balance being the competitive nature of being a football player from high school through college to pro and being successful at it? How do you balance winning as an individual and making it to the star status but also winning as a team with your 52 other, you know, roster mates and the coaching staff. Yeah. So balancing your individual wins with your team wins. And then the second part is I know you played offensive tackle, didn't have too many opportunities or maybe any to score a touchdown, but if you were to score a touchdown yourself, please show us your dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first part, right, individual wins versus team wins, you know, how do you separate those? You don't. Because if you're winning as an individual in a team, you're winning. Vaughn Miller had an amazing game. Do you think he helped us win the Super Bowl? Absolutely. Individual wins correlate to team wins. Right? Now, where, where the issue comes is if you get an individual win and you start separating yourself from the team. Right? That's when the issues come. Hey, man, I had a great game. What about y'all? You know, that's not a teammate. That's not production. That's not winning. Winning is... Man, I had a great game. Thanks for that play. Thanks for telling me. Thanks for communicating to me on the line that we're going to do this. Thanks for telling me the ball was in the air so I could turn around and make an interception. That's individual wins correlating to team wins. Because if you're a part of a team, nothing you do is ever an individual win. So don't ever try and separate from the win. And relating to a, a touchdown pass, I got to be honest with you, man. I'm still mad at my boy Brady Quinn, man. I had an opportunity in college against the University of Michigan Wolverines. You know those cats, those little kitty cats? 
And I, man, I was from here to that wall to the end zone, wide open. I'd have made it too. I'm fast now. I'm fast. He threw it in the dirt, man. But if he was, but if he did hit me, I was gonna, of course, spike it, even though I got the foul. You know, <laughs> open the door. I'm back again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not that I thought about it or anything. You know. Maybe a couple more. So go ahead. Um, first of all, great dance, loving it. <laughs> um, so related to what you talked about, the I am, I can, I will, and your goals, and believing in yourself, now that you're out of the NFL and retired, what are you going to do now in retirement to continue this and you know help spread the word? And I guess what are your goals now that you're not in the NFL? Right. My goals are to be a great father, husband, and to make a successful transition from the NFL. Right. And so I'm doing those things. As he mentioned, uh, get on your uh, iTunes, search the podcast, Crickman and Harris, or tune in on the way home today, 3 to 6 a.m. 950. Some people call it Crickman and Harris. I call it the rocket ship. You know what I'm saying? We are we in altitude. But yeah, he's the uh, he's the co-host. Okay. Yeah. He's uh, he's one. He's actually one of the best play by play and, and sports st statisticians uh, really in the country. So I've actually had a, a fortunate time to, to, to uh, be on air with him. And we talk about other things, race, politics. I keep baiting him to come to the black barbershop with me, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but for me, every day that I'm breathing after retirement is a success, right? Junior Seau committed suicide. 78% of professional athletes are broke and or chemically dependent two years after being in the NFL. So I've been saving my money since day one. So take the information that's around you. And like I said, be a good father, good husband, and make a successful transition. And part of that transition is realize, you know, when, I, when, I, when we won the Super Bowl, I want to share these things as I share with you today. Because these are things that not only help me, but things that really deep down you already knew, right? People have heard about meditation. People have heard about believing in yourself. But seeing it and talking about it, we rarely have these conversations. So this is very much a part of what I want to do in my transition. And, I don't, and again, we talked earlier about asking for others' permission. I'm just going to do it. Right? I'm going to come show up. I bought it. Y'all make me want to get the, the app now. Okay? I'm going to check y'all out. It's free on iOS right now. You can download it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And then use it. You'll be one of those 1.5 million. All right. See, now I want to help you. So, so for me, being able to share what's helped me become successful and other people, it really is the success of all of us. And that's what I talked about earlier. We can change the world. And we can do that. I firmly believe in that. One more? Okay, one more question. Who, uh, who else? What, we got so, okay. All right. Charlie's birthday yesterday. Hey, Pisces, what up, baby? Yeah. <laughs> celebrate. Um, so when, when we work hard, you know, put in big hour weeks, um, obviously a lot of time to spend in meetings in front of a computer. Your job is so different because it's so physical. Uh, how have you dealt with staying in peak condition all the time and working uh, in such a physical environment? And the second part of the question, dude, I got to know, how much do you bench press? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that's part of being a professional, right? Re the first part of your question, staying in peak performance. And a lot of it is finding out, you know, we talked about what, what, it, what it looks like for you. So for me, like they got a day, like, you know, Tuesdays is our day off. Right. And, and, and in my initial stages of my career and when you're early on, you better go above and beyond. But one of the things I said was Tuesday's my day off. I'm going to stay late Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Right. Studying film, talking to the different players, making sure we're on the same page. But Tuesday, don't call me. That's my day off. And if you kind of build in your time off, whatever that is, you know, some people may be watching Netflix or binging a show. Right. Some people it may be hitting a cycle spin class or, or going on a hike, but you have to do those things. It's your responsibility to find a break in your daily activities, right? Some people that may be just sitting outside to eat lunch. Some people that may be planning a week-long vacation because, damn it, you need it, right? So make sure whatever it is for you, if you like the beach, go to the beach, right? Don't make an excuse, right? If you like Going, up, going to the movies, go to the movies. If you like the Buell Theater, get a membership to the Buell Theater. What's stopping you, right? People often ask me, you know, how can I, how can I get a break? I say, well, what's stopping you from getting a break, you know? And, and another important aspect is getting an accurate amount of sleep. 
We talked about performance psychology being an up and coming event and, and thing in sports, big in professional sports, but so is sleep. Do you know that if you get the accurate amount of sleep, you increase your performance by 9% across the board, whether that's in business or sports, 9% increase in your performance. So get some sleep, 10 to 12 hours. I'm not talking about six hours. I'm talking about 10 to 12 hours. Get, get yourself, go on the app, get some blackout blinds <laughs> and get some good sleep. And then for bench pressing, man, you know, I'd have to say like 900 pounds. <laughs> 900 pounds. I actually got a silver back, you know, if I take my shirt, I got a, I'm a silver back gorilla, man. 900 pounds. Thank you for your time. Stay creative, stay active.